So here I am back in Visual Studio. So we've seen how we're able to create an actionable bug. And as part of creating that actionable bug, we created an action log. That action log let us do fast forward for manual testing to where it let us jump through and recheck our work and verify that the bug had been fixed. Now what I want to do is take advantage of that hard work and create a coded UI test. This coded UI test will allow me to automate my regression test planning. So what we're going to do is come over here and select Add New Project. Sorry, File, Add New Project. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick Visual C Sharp and I'm going to pick a test project. And I'm going to call this Blue Yonder dot web dot tests. I'm going to click OK. Now, once I got this new test project loaded, um, the default is that it's going to give me a unit test. So I'm going to close this and delete it from my project because I don't need that right now. And yes, we'll delete it permanently. Now what I want to do is add a new coded UI test. So I right click, add, and select coded UI test. Now what's going to happen is Visual Studio is going to generate a source file and this is going to give me a choice on how I can generate this coded UI test. It's telling me I can record the actions, do some editing and add my assertions, or I can use an existing action recording. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, what, I'm, what Visual Studio has asked me to do is to find an existing action recording. So I'm going to come over here and click the drop down and come over here to My Test Cases and select Find. And what you see here is that we have the Attempt to Book a Flight test case from earlier. We're going to click OK and what it's going to do is it's going to parse the information in that action log and it's going to generate all the code I need. And what you see is that we have a method body called coded UI test method, and within it we have a bunch of individual methods representing the various steps we went through. And you'll notice we have these test contexts with data rows that represent those data values that were passed in. So one of the things we could do later if we wanted to is we could provide a data feed of various information to try different parameters. In the test we did manually earlier, we were testing the flights going from LAX to Sydney. Well, maybe we want to test another set of flight, uh, another city pair. Maybe we want to do uh, London to Bangalore, for example. Now, what I want to do is fast forward this to get me at the right point. So what we're going to do is come over here and select the Run Test in Current Context. And what we're going to see is Visual Studio is going to start up Internet Explorer, and it's going to run the test for me. It's going to go through. It's going to do everything just like I was doing it right now to get there. Because what I want to do is I want to get to the point where Internet Explorer is at a location where I can go through and add assertions. So we see that the test is passed. And now what we want to do is come down and create an assertion that's going to check for our status message. So what I'm going to do is now right click in this white space, it's like generate code for coded UI test. And we use the coded UI test builder. Now what this is going to allow me to do is to come over here and take the crosshairs and I can come in here and look for information. I can find controls and values of the controls so that I can validate what has happened on the page. This is letting me basically provide the eyes to my automated tester. Now what we see here is that we have an enter text property you can't return before you leave. So what we're going to do here is select add assertion. And you see we have a compare operator, let's just choose different values, and we're going to pick r equal. And what we want to do is make sure that if we check for a different value, it doesn't succeed. So we're going to change this to an exclamation point. I'm going to click OK. And now once I've done that, I can come in here and tell the coded UI test builder to generate code. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the method from this assert method 1 to check for error message to be its name. Now we'll click add and generate and it's going to add this code to our Visual Studio project. 
Now we're done using the coded UI test builder, so we're going to close this. And now we're going to come back over here and we're going to run the test in the current context one more time. It's going to start Internet Explorer up. It's going to execute the test. It's going to go through and fill in the values. But the thing that's going to be different now is it's going to do the assertion. It's going to check to see if it got the value. And the value we asked for is the one with an exclamation point. And you notice that this time we've got a failed test. So if we double click on it, we can see that assert.r equal failed. Expected you can't return before you leave exclamation point or and the actual value we got was you can't return before you leave with a period. So you see that you can get this red green um, refactor test mechanism where you can go through and look for what you expect to be there as well as what shouldn't be there and verify that your test is running correctly. Now, what we're going to do is go back to our coded UI test file and what we need to do is fix up our value for what we really want it to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this and we're going to select go to definition. Now inside the definition we're telling it what we want to check for. So if we take a look here UI you can't return before you test so we'll go to definition for that and now we can change the exclamation point here to a period. We'll save this and then we'll come over here and we're going to run it one more time. So we'll come back over here, put it back in the current context and let's run it. So run the test one more time, this time looking for the value we expect to be there, entering the values and the search button is going to get clicked and we see that now this time our test passed and that's because the value we we're looking for was found. So what you've just seen here is how we we're able to take our existing effort from our manual testers and leverage it to create a coded UI test. Now our testers are free to create new tests that we can then automate also. And we basically now have this automated tester that will show up on time and run test after test for us and look for problems in our code, basically regressions that can happen sometimes.